Hello all you Second Swing faithful. Appreciate you guys coming along for the journey. I am out of the office today. I am at my preferred practice area of Royal Manchester Golf Links in York, PA. Um, we're gonna do a second half of the season, what's in the bag. I'm gonna go through things real quick here. Um, there have been some changes from what I did in the start of the year, uh, even though it's been a bizarre, strange, short, kind of compact season. Um, the days were the same. It's just the tournaments weren't. So um, yeah, I didn't have a whole lot going on other than some, some recreational golf. Uh, whether that's going to be good or bad, I don't know. We're going to see, I guess, uh, as we start out 2021. Um, but I have made some changes in the bag from, from where I started the season. And uh, there's going to be some, some other big changes for 2021. So we're probably going to end up doing this one again in, uh, you know, probably February, March, something like that, once everything gets finalized. Um, but I am weird, and I do have some interesting things in the bag, so we're going to kind of go through those real quick. Um, just going to start with the driver. I am currently banging around with a Cobra Speed Zone driver. Um, you're going to see I've got a whole bunch of lead tape here on the, on the heel. Um, that is really due to the fact that this head, I've been able to get down to six and a half degrees, and I find at that loft, which I really need to produce the kind of launch and spin rates uh, that, I'm, that I'm looking for, and ball speed for that matter, um, I need some extra help getting the club face squared up. Um, it's, it's just one of those things where driver's the longest club in the bag, it's the one that we swing the fastest, it's going to be the hardest one to square up. And I don't really have as much trouble with a little bit more loft. A little more loft is going to be easier to square up. Uh, a three wood is going to be easier to square up than a driver. A four iron is going to be easier to square up than a three wood. Seven iron is going to be easier to square up than a, than a four iron. Um, so I need some extra help, a little extra weight in the heel. Uh, the speed zone doesn't have the kind of weight adjustability that something like the TaylorMade Sim does where you just... Uh, unscrew things, move it down, lock it in. Um, I had to go old school for this one, put some weight in the heel. Um, and I'm fine with that. Uh, I don't have any particular problem with the aesthetics of the, the bottom of the club because when I set it down to hit it, I don't see any of that. So it's really going and it's doing all of its work behind the scenes. So um, I'm rocking the uh, Project X Evenflow White T1100 shaft. This is 65 grams. Uh, 6.0. I'm kind of on that borderline flex-wise. Um, I actually started doing the super speed sticks uh, about 10 days ago. Um, I did them in 2019 and picked up about five miles an hour of club head speed. Uh, I haven't done them since I got through my first five-week program is and because right about that time I started getting into tournaments and I just kind of let it go. Um, I started doing them again uh, just last week and I've already seen about two mile an hour increase in club head speed. When I started first day that I did them, my average club head speed was 104.5. Uh, I topped out at like 105.7, something like that, 105.7, 105.8. Um, when I did them on Thursday uh, this week, I topped out at 107.6, and I had an average club head speed of 106.5. So these things work. If you are looking to get more club head speed. You know, I'm not a gadget guy. I've been an instructor for a long time now, and I just tend to not like most gadgetry. Uh, we're golfers, we'll buy anything, right? Um, the speed sticks make a very modest claim. You know, they're gonna say you're gonna get pick up five to eight percent. If I can pick up five miles an hour and go from 105 to 110, my distance potential is crazy. I've got my drivers, uh, you know, perfectly dialed in for launch and spin with the, you know, with what's available to me right now. Um, so the efficiency is there, you know, you give me that club head speed and it's, it's, it's exciting. It really is exciting because right starting about 106 is about when I can get to 300 with my numbers optimized. So, um, you know, not bad for a, uh, kind of short fat guy. Um, still being able to bang it out at, at uh, around 300 at age 50 is kind of cool. So after the driver, 
I'm going into, um, I'm actually staying with my fairway woods. I've got um, Callaway Epic Flash Sub-Zero. Uh, my three wood is a three plus. It's actually uh, effectively a driver replacement for me. Um, my mental issues with the driver are well documented. So when I feel like I can't stand there and make a positive move with the driver, uh, this does give me something to fall back on. Uh, allows me to get to you know, 270, 280 off the tee when I catch it really good. So uh, I'm not giving up a huge amount of, of uh, distance. Um, you know, driver obviously is an advantage when I can when I can do it. There's certain instances where I just can't. So um, this is going to be the first time in my life, I think, that I've had uh, fairway wood shafts that match my driver shaft. So even flow white T1100, uh, 75 gram, 6.0. You know, I was talking about the speed with the driver. Even with extra speed, I think I'm probably gonna end up sticking with the stiff flex. I don't like the feeling of having to work too, too hard with the, with the woods. Um, this shaft loads and unloads just perfectly for me. It's like, it's my spirit shaft. I love this thing. And uh, so I don't have any plans to go away from either my uh, three wood or my five wood, which I actually have also cranked down to um, 17 degrees so effectively it's like a two wood and a four wood um, I don't have any any plans to switch from these at all um, I'm normally I'm normally the switching guy uh, I tend to like to play current model line stuff but uh, these have been just absolutely fantastic uh, I'm high launch these are low spin allows me to cover my gaps really really well and so no there won't be a change coming in, in, in that end um, where there has been a big change though is in that do I play a four iron do I play a hybrid what do I do after my longest iron so um, longest iron I carry is a five iron and I am now carrying TaylorMade's DHY um, I have to jump to a three to get my gap uh, four wasn't going to quite do it I couldn't quite get enough separation between the five iron and the, and the four so I jumped up to the three iron uh, this thing's got a little wider sole than the UDI, uh, a little bit, looks a little bit bigger, so it's a little more comfortable for me standing there looking at it. You know, I got enough club head speed and I've certainly got enough launch to, to hit a four iron. I just don't feel like I'm consistent enough. And honestly, I don't really like the look of hybrids that much either. I'm really, that whole aesthetic thing, I'm just kind of crazy. And so I don't love the hybrid thing. I've been playing one. It's been, a, you know, I played a Titleist 818H2 for uh, about a year and a half or so. And, you know, it, it pretty much did everything that I wanted it to. My misses were high and spinny, so things would come up short. I needed a golf club that I felt like I could launch as high, but it wasn't going to spin as much. So we got these in as demos at Second Swing down in Columbia. Um, this one I actually put the little heavier weighted uh, lower spinning uh, Diamana thump shaft in it. Uh, the stock ones, the the, the new Diamana Limited. Um, this one spins a little less, so I was really wanting to attack the spin rate, try to keep that down so that uh, so that I can get things, you know, I can cover that 115 to 125 yard range, and hopefully not have things spin up too much on me like I was having with the with the hybrids. So. Um, Early results have been very good. Um, I've only got two rounds in it. Uh, I hit it off the tee, goes about 240, it's awesome. Uh, easy to flight, uh, like an iron. And I've actually gouged it out of the rough a couple times. The, the one area I was really kind of concerned that I'd be giving something up from the hybrid was maybe not being able to get it out of the rough. So far this has come out of the rough very, very nicely. So I'm very happy with this. Looking forward to spending more time with it and, uh, and being able to really get it nicely integrated into the bag. My irons are currently um, Cobra Forge Tech. Uh, I've been playing these now for a year. Uh, it's great iron, feels great, sounds great. Uh, you're going to see on some of these I've got some lead tape, other ones I don't. Um, it's all about a feel thing. Um, I'm not really trying to change up uh, performance characteristics so much. Uh, it's all about feel. Um, big thing for me, this is going to be an iron change for next season. Um, as much as I like these, I mean, the sound and the feel are just fabulous. Gives you a lot of confidence, a lot of feedback. 
Cobra's always had one of my shapes. Uh, Cobra and Callaway tend to have the same kind of crotch of the golf club here. And this is what my eyes just immediately focus on. Uh, again, I, I definitely get a little bit weird here, but this is the area of the golf club that to me defines whether something looks good or doesn't look good. Um, and with the Forge Tech, they kind of change that shape up just a little bit. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit flatter here than I typically like to see. I like to see this part cut in a little deeper and a little steeper rise up to the toe. And so the new Cobra Mem King Tours are just glorious. To my eye, it's exactly how I want an iron to look. I am very, very excited to try and get these in my hands. Um, it will be my iron of choice for next year. Um, there's absolutely no doubt about that. They just look exactly like I want a golf club to look. Um, how it performs, well, that's going to be up to me. Um, shafts in these, I've gone with the Aerotech Steel Fiber 110s. I do have a little bit of the old guy arthritis coming in in the hands. When I hit some balls in the morning before work, if I get in early, you know, first 10, 15 shots are just excruciating. It really hurts. Um, I've gone to some bigger grips to try and help with that. Um, and then going to the graphite helps take a little bit of that impact out of there. So um, I'm going to stick with the Aerotech steel fibers. They're, they feel fantastic. Um, I did jump back up to the X-Flex when I went to these. Uh, they just feel super, super stable. It's a little different than I would normally fit somebody. Uh, I tend to go a little stiffer in the woods than I do in the irons, but I'm weird. And for me, it's all about feel and it's about numbers. So, um, you know, I threw these in there when I was doing my demos with them and they just felt right. So uh, that was really good. Got to give a little bit of shout out to Boyd Blade and Farrell. Um, you know, Patrick Boyd's a, an awesome, awesome dude and his. Uh, vision for what golf clubs ought to look like is absolutely fantastic. So uh, I got some BB and F ferrules on on these. Uh, I'll have a new order going in here pretty soon when I uh, when I get the uh, the new uh, King Tours. Um, got to decorate it, man. Don't want to leave your walls blank. Um, all right, moving on to the wedges. So wedges for this season were Taylor Made Mill Grind Twos. Um, I went 48 degrees and then I've got a 54 that I bent down to 53 and a 58 that I've actually bent up to 59. Uh, again, it's all about gapping, getting things right there. Uh, these have been really good for me. I like the way they look. I like the way they feel. I like the way they sound. Um, love the old school nod with the rusted faces and the chrome. Uh, I thought that was a, a wonderful touch from, from TaylorMade. I've really enjoyed playing these wedges this year. Um, thing is, I'm a wedge hound. I love wedges. I got my start in fitting with Scratch Golf Clubs, which was focusing on wedges. So I switch companies every single year. So last year it was Vokies. Year before that it was Ping. Year before that it was uh, Cleveland. Year before that it was Callaway. This year, I'm going to give them to Cobra. I'm going to play the uh, the Cobra MIM wedges uh, to kind of complement that that MIM uh, Tour iron. Um, so that'll be another big change for, for 2021. I'm going to change up my loss a little bit too. Uh, probably going to tune up the, the Tours just a little bit, make them about a degree stronger. Um, that'll allow me to, to slot in a 48 degree wedge again like I've had here. Um, that pitching wedge gap wedge zone is where I'm most comfortable taking some uh, taking something off a shot, trying to hit a, a little finesse shot. I tend to like being a full swing guy, um, but because we're only allowed 14 clubs in the bag, I need some place where I can hit some finesse shots. So pitching wedge and gap wedge are the, the, the clubs where I'm most comfortable with that. Um, so I like having that. 44 degree pitching wedge, 48 degree gap wedge, and then I'll go to a 52 degree as my sand wedge for next year. Uh, I'm really getting into basically one club stronger than old school lofts now, uh, but I'm not really concerned with what's what the number is on the bottom of the club. Ideally, you know, if I could pick this thing up here and you know this is my this is my nine iron. I if it didn't say nine iron, if it just said 
you hit this 150. Uh, it would be the ideal thing because then you just reach in your bag. Oh, okay, I hit this one 150. Um, so I'm not really overly concerned about what the number is on the bottom of the club. I don't get wrapped up in that stuff. I want each tool in my box to cover a particular yardage. And as long as I have the clubs that I need to cover the yardage from driver to the sand wedge, cool, I'm good. So uh, last club in the bag is my putter. Um, it's also well documented that I've gone through a lot of putters this year. Probably don't have enough battery life to go through all the putters I've tried this year. Um, I've not really been a big Scotty Cameron guy. I uh, was probably a little more of a Cameron guy when I was on tour. Um, you know, makes great putters, really great marketing. Um, I found a putter kind of randomly, picked it up in the shop. It just really works well for me. Um, it is con it's the uh, select fastback, so it's previous gen. Uh, it's a very simple golf club, really. Um, we got a, it's mostly face balanced. We've got about a one, maybe 130 toe hang here, uh, which works out really, really well for me. I kind of fall right in between that slight arc and the face balance. So this one kind of slots in really, really nicely. Um, frames the ball very well for me. Uh, it's got a little bit of offset, which I, which I think I need. Um, adjustable weights currently got 15s in here probably going to stick with that might see about getting a set of 20s and see how it feels with a little heavier weight in there but um i've got this one at 33 and a half inches um got the flat cat svelte which is kind of uh just a little bit above their standard size um this is the rubber grip, which I really appreciate the feel of much better than the, the original material. And uh, lie angle wise, I'm, I'm a degree flat. I use two degree loft. And uh, yeah, so I'm hoping that I can run with this one for a while next year. Uh, I, I only have a couple of putters in my arsenal now. I have to keep getting rid of them as I get new ones. So, um, you know, I'm not overloaded like I was when I, when I came off tour. Um, so we'll see, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's always a work in progress. Um, one quick note on the driver, um, on currently on the conforming list, uh, for the USGA is Cobra's new rad speed. Uh, this will be their new driver line for 2021. Uh, one of the, the models that is in there is a five and a half degree driver. Um, obviously this was made for Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, I am hoping that I might be able to get one of those cause, um, you know, I don't need to go below that one. Uh, nice thing on that is it would actually be a five and a half degree head. Wouldn't be a, you know, uh, an eight and a half that's cranked down and open two degrees. Um, obviously when you take a, golf club and you take loft off of it, you're changing the lying a little bit and you're also opening the club face a little bit, which is why it's harder to square up. And so a five and a half degree head that was square, I might not have to throw that extra lead tape on there, but I'm trying to, you know, I, I typically swing up at it four, five, six degrees with the driver. So I'm really coming in, creating a lot of dynamic loft. Uh, and I need something that launches, you know, in a, a little bit better window than I've had. So that's why the six, six and a half degrees thing has been work, working very well for me. I want as low a spin as I can get. I would not typically send somebody out of the studio that wasn't super, super efficient with under 2000 RPM, but I've been swinging it around 1900, 2000 RPM this year. Uh, and that's part of what's allowing me to get that distance that I really, uh, I've really been enjoying. So, you know, a five and a half degree head, really should produce really good ball speed should produce really good spin numbers as long as i can square the thing up uh could be the perfect new new thing for me so we'll see what happens but um you know fingers crossed hopefully uh hopefully cobra will be be generous enough to to allow me a, a five and a half degree rad, uh, rad speed for this season so uh, once i've got all this stuff in we'll go through it again anyway uh y'all take care have a wonderful fall